Oh, hey YouTube, what is the point of this? Is this really a good idea for a glider concept? What the devil is the designer of this thing thinking? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to talk to the man himself. Today's video is sponsored by the new iPhone PureTrack app. You can use this to register all the aircraft you fly regularly, click which one you're flying, turn on the tracker, and you'll show up on PureTrack so your friends and family can keep track of you. Give it a try next time you fly. Uh, hello, Gonzalo. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much for Hi. agreeing to do this. Hi, thank you for having me. The, uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, where are you from? And what are you doing this project as part of? Well, my name is Gonzalo Garcia Tance. I'm from Spain. And I'm a lecturer in aerospace engineering at the University of Central Lancashire in the UK. And uh, what's your gliding history and experience? Well, as a pilot trainee, I have like around 30 flights, but I'm an aeronautical engineer. I like, I like very much uh, aircraft and plane. I'm also, I'm also been a radio control glider pilot and I compete in thermal, DLG, slope racing. But mainly I'm an aeronautical engineer rather than a pilot. And, uh, well, we all found your um, concepts of this aircraft very interesting. And judging by the number of comments and questions on the uh, on the Facebook posts that you posted, I thought this would be an interesting uh, topic to talk about. And I uh, get to explain a little bit about uh, why did you come up with this concept for this uh, very unusual glider? And, uh, yeah, where did the concept come from? Well, when I went to fly in my local club, in the Forest of Bowland Club, I was frustrated to see that I couldn't see around so much as when I was actually walking on the fields. So my idea came from the air, and then uh, I developed it with the year. We'll just run through some of the common questions people had. Where will the instruments go? Because it looked like there wasn't much of an instrument panel in front of uh, the pilot. Which gives a nice yeah. view, but we have to have some instruments, uh, and obviously pilots love their instruments. De definitely you need to have instruments, and you need the flight computer to know where you are going and travel around, and so on. Uh, there are two boxes, two instrument boxes on each side. You can see them in the renders, and they are big enough to fit four instruments of 80 millimeters, and another two instruments of 57 millimeters and a flight computer. All right, so plenty of space. So are they off to the side of the pilot? Yes, uh, on rather than in the middle. In, rather than in the middle. The other big question that people had is what about crash protection? So uh, for the pilot, obviously, uh, most gliders uh, have quite a big double layered fiberglass shell around the pilot, and they've been over the years making much better crash protection to protect the pilot from. Uh, crumpling in the front of the glider. Your design looks like the pilot's further forward, and would that be a problem? Well, there, there is a lot of debate in, in social media at the time with that. Actually, it struck me a little bit because the distance of the lower spine with the uh, gown in my design is, is much greater than in a conventional glider where there is no distance with the lower spine and the ground that you hit a rock in a crash landing. And also there is like around the, the pilot, there is a space in the edge of the fuselage to put a, a crash cage uh, all around the pilot. Another big question, uh, most people seem to think that the drag from the fuselage would be too much. I mean, this is probably your area of expertise is figuring out the aerodynamics to make sure that shape of the fuselage will work aerodynamically. Yes, it looks like a lot of frontal area. I think you have a picture, uh, a, a drawing of the frontal uh, view of the glider. So it, it seems that the frontal area is a lot, but actually it's not that big in comparison, for example, with other gliders that have a side-by-side -side seat position. And uh, the performance I calculated is estimated from a high performance glider of, with a glider ratio of 56. Assuming that high performance glider has this glider ratio of 56, 
the death penalty of my future latches gives a glide ratio of 46, 48, 49.6, 50, this type of number. Yeah, well, and that's, that is a high-performance glider. Would people, do you think, well, would you be able to use this for racing, do you think? No. Well, not unless if it is handicapped as well. Yeah. If it is uh, if the different uh, penalties because of the type of aircraft you are flying, uh, then, then this is not competitive. It doesn't mean that you cannot do uh, fast flights in a good day. I think you could do fast flights long distance in a good day, but not as long as if you had had a better uh, a, a, not a glider designed for high performance. This is designed for maximizing the flying experience. Yes, so it's quite a different target market because most gliders, new gliders that are sold, are aimed at racing pilots and competition pilots. And I think you've identified that you know, a lot of people are not racing competition pilots. Uh, so what is the market that you see for this glider? Well, I'm very optimistic. You know, uh, I think there is a, like a feedback loop of people competing, advising manufacturers to design new gliders. But there is no anybody engaging the, to fly on Saturday morning advising manufacturers. So, Assuming that the flying experience is better, that this could be debatable, and assuming that the glider is a little bit safer than conventional gliders, that this is debatable, if these two things become true, then I think the market is 50% of the market. Uh, was Where does the wheel and the tow hook go? Uh, because obviously the shape of the bottom of the glider is quite different. Yes, uh, the, the tow hook goes in the nose. Where well, the nose is in the in in the ultra vision glider, and the main hook for winch is uh, in front of the main landing gear, like in a conventional uh, in a conventional glider. The main landing gear is in that uh, uh, corner, in that corner that you can see. Okay, so it, there's plenty of space for all that equipment. Yes, the, the center of gravity goes a little bit lower, so pro, I, I didn't, uh, well, I, I believe the, the tow behavior of the plane will be, will be alright. You will need to be used to the different moment created by the cable, but it's going to be manageable. And, uh, do you think, obviously you think visibility is a big problem with current gliders? And I suspect a lot of glider pilots don't really see it as a big problem because if you want to see underneath you, you can just roll. Uh, well, maybe the, the word problem is not the one that I would choose because it's not a, a problem. Uh, it doesn't make accidents. Or it doesn't make... It's not a problem. I, I would I, I would say that the experience is hindered because... The, the visibility is not as good as I would like. So, um, then, uh, I think the, the experience with the ultra vision, the fine experience with the ultra vision will be uh, so much better that once you have tried out in that glider, I think you would want to, to fly again in that glider. Fair enough. And, uh, another thought I had is, uh, current single seat gliders you're designed to be in a very reclined position obviously made to be as comfortable as possible for very long flights um will pilots really want to sit upright like in a chair for hours well in a chair is not a fair it's not a fair uh, word i would not use an armchair in an armchair that is much more comfortable you yeah. are sitting in an upright position you can also, the cockpit is much more roomy. You can build forward and backwards the, the seat. And also, actually, this position allows you to, to lean forward, to lean forward and backward, even to reach your foot. You can even change your shoes 
for women's shoes, you have fresher shoes, you can store things under your seat, uh, plenty of space, like uh, clothes, food, drink. So I, I actually, I think it would be more comfortable. But this again uh, might be a, a, a question of personal preferences. Yeah, well, so many times I've wanted to scratch an itch in my shoe <laughs> and not oh, been able yeah, to. Well. <laughs> so, yes, I can definitely see some advantages. And I guess, uh, you know, as you said earlier, um, truck drivers often sit in this position for hours and hours. You know, it's, it, it is a comfortable position that people drive vehicles in. So it's not too dissimilar to yeah. sitting in a vehicle. And don't forget to check out our online store. We've got some awesome new T-shirt designs. Keep in mind, Christmas is coming up fast. If you want to ensure delivery, order your Christmas gifts now. Well, thank you very much. That's answered a lot of, I think, the main questions people had about your design. And I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you very okay. much for coming and talking to us today. Okay, thank you very much. And see you later. You too.